Now, Pakistan is observing Air Force Day with patriotic zeal today, and the day is celebrated to relive the memory of 1965 war when Pakistani pilots inflicted humiliating defeat on India. Now, to talk more about this, we have with us Air Marshal retired Masood Akhtar. So, welcome to Indus News. Now, tell us what lessons were learned from the air war of 1965. Big ones. I think number one that when you have good leadership and Noor Khan was an iron man. He led from the front. He demanded discipline from his uh, air warriors and uh, he had trained them very well. And to top it all, his strategy was good. He decided to preempt. Air Marshal Arjun Singh was his colleague from the erstwhile pre-partition Indian Air Force. And uh, I think he competed very well. And his pilots, people like uh, late Rafiki, Junus, Middlecourt, Cecil Chaudhary, uh, Alauddin Butch Ahmed, uh, Air Commodore Sajad Haider, presently and then he was a squadron leader. When they flew on the 6th and before that on 1st of September, they had written a tale of excellence and bravado and uh, courage and guts and uh, grit, uh, which has very few parallels. And when we look at the quotations about the 65 war, generally when they talk of the overall war, we think it was a stalemate. But people like Chuck Yeager, people like Chuck Horner, uh, Chuck Yeager, who was the first one to go supersonic in the world in the X-1, and uh, Chuck Horner, who was the JFAC Joint Air Force Component Commander uh, in, in Gulf War I, they have nothing but praise for Pakistan Air Force. Chuck Horner says during Gulf War I, he was only scared of the Iraqi pilots who were trained by the Pakistanis. When the Pakistanis, because they're thinking people, when the Pakistanis told them that, look, it is they are being controlled on the radar by an archaic, archaic uh, control system, he said he took a sigh of relief. That now it is not going to be any problem. But if somebody gave him a difficulty during Gulf War I, these were the pilots who were trained by the likes of Rafiki and Yunus and Cecil Chaudhary and Middle Court. And in fact, in 71, the traditions that they left behind a single number 14 squadron with 14 to 16 aeroplanes flew against, you know, how squadrons? 13. 13 fighter squadrons means uh, 13 into 16, something like 160, 200 aeroplanes. So 14 versus 160 to 200 aeroplanes, and uh, they had a kill ratio again of 1 is to 3. In 65 war, of war also, we had a kill ratio of 1 is to 3, 4, 5. And the numbers, Indian Air Force was something like 700 frontline combat aeroplanes and ours were 260. So a force larger than one third plus, um, three times uh, the, the Pakistan Air Force, Noor Khan had an edge and he won air superiority right on 1st September when the war was not on. And uh, on 1st of September, uh, late Rafiki and uh, Flight Lieutenant Imtiaz Bhatti, they shot two vampires each over Cham Jodhiyan, right over River Tavi, where the armor, Indian armor and Pakistani armor was bumper to bumper. And uh, you know what they did? They wrote off a big flight of Oregon's, which was a French aeroplane, and the vampires and something like 160 to 200 aeroplanes were taken out of the fight. So one third of the Indian Air Force was taken out on 1st of September, uh, just because Rafiki and Imtiaz Bhatti Saab shot two aeroplanes each, and they said vampires and Oregon's will not be able to survive the war. So that was the kind of feat of leadership, of courage, and grit, and uh, training and discipline. Wow, this is unbelievable to believe, but the fact is Pakistan Air Force has proven its mettle whenever it is tested now. How did the air war affect the outcome of the conflict? Well, 
the air war, we, we had air superiority, relative air superiority. Let us not forget that the Indian Air Force also is a professional air force. They also flew low altitude, 150 nautical miles into Sargoda and Peshawar and had air combat at the edge of their endurance and range with the Pakistani pilots. There was this flight left in Devia who comes in a mist here and he does slow speed scissors with an F-104. And eventually um, in one of the passes in, in, in the effort to get behind one another, they collide. Uh, flight Lieutenant Amjad, he later on rose to be uh, an air vice marshal. He ejects out of the 104, gets a sitara jurat, and uh, Flight Lieutenant Devia, he goes down with the aeroplane. He was given a param veer chakra. So notwithstanding that the Indian Air Force is also a professional air force, Noor Khan had an edge. And once I asked him, I said, sir, uh, he was much too senior to me. Uh, and uh, I asked him, sir, you won the air war. What happened, the air battle, what happened to the war? Actually, uh, the outcome of the war was a very, very fortunate for us and for India also, a stalemate. We wanted to go across into Kashmir and liberate Kashmir through Gibraltar. Killed. India wanted to decimate us as a, as a nation and as a military, they failed. And the likes of Rafiki and Yunus and Aziz Bhatti and Shami, they were the ones who at the tactical level gave their blood and they were able to uh, not only save Pakistan against an enemy that was five times, both in all three, Army, Navy and Air Force. And uh, that is why uh, the Army Chief very rightly said last evening that the military is fully ready for all conventional and unconventional threats. And we proved it over and over again, 71. We proved it in Kargil. We proved it in the Afghan war. But more importantly, we proved it on 19th February 2019, when the traditions of all these erstwhile giants that I, ha I have mentioned, uh, their tales were replicated by small pe smaller people. I mean, in, in terms of junior, in, they were very junior. Uh, Noman Siddiqui, sorry, Wing Commander Noman and uh, Siddiqui, Squadron Leader Siddiqui, when uh, Noman shot uh, Abhinandan and uh, Siddiqui shot an SU-30. So uh, we should be very humble in our um, attitude. Uh, thank Allah. Uh, but also look forward to the tradition that were left behind by these very, very tall people. And uh, the Pakistan Air Force has done well. The Army has just taken care, not just, but about 10 years back, took care of an insurgency, which is very difficult, messy, and which was complex. But uh, the Pakistan Army, supported by the Pakistan Air Force, and uh, had Pakistan Air Force not supported, we would have lost many, many more men in Wazir, Waziristan um, and Zarbe Azm and all, all these efforts. Uh, so we took care of the insurgency. We have a huge threat today. And when the army chief says there can be terrorism, the TTP is not died and it's not out. Uh, it can give us problems, but he said we are fully ready and I entirely agree with him. Now talking about that, uh, former DG ISPR, Mr. Asif Kafur said, that we gave India a bloody nose and the Pakistan armed forces have made it a habit of giving India a bloody nose, be it on the history or at the present stage. Now, has India learned a lesson from February 27th dogfight? I will not be arrogant. We should be humble about what we have done. And, but Asif Kafur is absolutely right. We taught them a lesson. What lesson has India learned? Please remember, when in broad daylight, whereas they came in the thick of night and they lobbed their uh, weapons, we say from a distance, they dropped their weapons, they got hold of a cow, of a crow and um, a few pine trees. <laughs> uh, then we went in next day in broad daylight and re-established, and I'm very, uh, a very proud sky blue warrior, uh, we re-established military deterrence and political deterrence all by a single service application. Please remember, Muneeb, 
air power in certain conditions can achieve political and military ends by itself in certain conditions. It will always need boots on ground to fight their way through, supported by the air, and in, of course in the south, supported by the uh, maritime forces, by the Pakistan Navy, uh, but we re-established. India did not have the guts to relaunch an effort against this. They did not reciprocate by launching another. What have they learned? That the strategic strikes on ground failed. They have absolutely, General Huda, who, who oversaw this, he has not given an iota of evidence of the strategic strikes on ground, which we've been clamoring for, asking for in the international press. Uh, when they launched the air strike, they thought they can stay below the nuclear threshold and do anything in the air to teach Pakistan a lesson. They could not. So they have chosen not to relaunch a military effort, but a smaller one also. But where is the difficulty? India has got a huge military. It cannot employ, and we also know, we tried once in Kashmir, we tried second time in Kashmir, we tried third time in Kargil. Uh, in, in, in Kargil, we also found that military application has its severe limitations. But India has even bigger limitations, and that is nobody, the powers that be, will not allow India to launch a full-fledged war of 10 days to a month. And if they don't do that from north to south, uh, they will not generate their full combat power. The case in point, when the parliament was struck, in their case, they tried to launch a full-fledged war. America said, stop, stop, stop. They said, no, we are not stopping. We must decimate Pakistan into many pieces. So what did the Americans do? They launched, they, they gave a travel advisory to their people in Bangalore, etc. So when the Americans moved out, were moving out, the Europeans also said, there is threat, so they're all. So the Indians said, please stop. We are not doing anything. So that is the limit of application of military power. Likewise in Bombay, the post-Bombay. If they want to test our resolve within Kashmir, now that is a small area in terms of the airspace above and on the ground. If they bring in two, three, four, five cores, we can also take, take them there and keep the defensive balance in the center and, and in the south. They will bring in their two, three, four, uh, five elite squadrons, fighter squadrons to Kashmir. We can also do that. We have all the air bases in the north. We can also do that. And please remember, I want to give this good news to our viewers. Our Air Force leadership is full. I, I retired in 2005, so I don't know everything that is classified. But little that I know, by the beginning of next year, and by now, Rafales with their meteors are not operational fully. They've been flying, of course, across the LAC uh, in Ladakh, etc. But we will have a good antidote to Rafale in the form of J-10, possibly, and the PL-15. And remember, the J-10 is 4.5 generation fighter. And its uh, PL-15 and its AISA radar are supposedly better than that of. So people, the Pakistan Air Force, air warriors do not only train hard, and they train with great courage and belief, but our leadership is fully cognizant of the threats that India, when Modi said, had we had Rafales, things would have been different. So I think we have not done bad. We should not be arrogant, we should be humble. They are also a professional military. But with a small military, Army, Navy, and Air Force, look at Dwarka. I know Admiral Tasneem, he's a great elder and a great friend, Sitara, Jurat, and uh, Bar in 71, uh, through a small, uh, small submarine, commanding a small submarine in the thick of the depths of uh, Arabian Sea, uh, Hangor. And he, he, he sunk the cookery. And uh, the Indians were taken aback. Just because of that, they could not launch a second strike onto Karachi. Because in the first strike, they had left the Karachi refinery aflame. 
and uh, so the like the army chief said yesterday the army is ready the air force is ready the navy is ready the only thing required is the nation must be put together it doesn't come Absolutely. together all by itself political leaders have to do that under like we discussed in some of the programs one national identity which should be a correct one a pakistani pakistan one common purpose one set of vital national interests these are some of the problems that we have otherwise 6th and 7th september and tomorrow probably the navy is going to celebrate we haven't done bad at all but i think we should be humble and pray to god uh, we should do even we will do even better inshallah we shall do now so with your experience uh, put us some sense into this question and also surprise our audience what is the reason behind india's jingoistic mindset and do you think it's getting worse with time absolutely it is unfortunate that uh, narendra modi coming into power with the hubris and the arrogance that he has to turn it into a hindutva state we did our since 47 small small bit by bit by bit narendra modi did it in one month when he undid uh, the 370 he did undid the 35a and he brought in the citizenship amendment act the secular forces the moderate people were up in arms against modi he may not he may not win i hope i am right he may not win the next elections but he has done uh, unterminable damage to mm. india pakistan relations where now we are ready to fully talk to india and they say don't even talk to the huriyat people otherwise we are not going to talk this is arrogance and hubris and they will also suffer we also have tended to suffer but they going to suffer more so this just thumping jingoism that uh, hindus are the best uh, this is a far more misplaced doctrine that is going to damage india but let me uh, coming back to 6 september what is the edge that we big lesson that we bring of leadership while i'll bring in myself this this uh, aspect you know nur khan had freshly taken over 3 months back from askar khan as the commander in chief and that is when 65 war comes number 1 the nation must know that uh, the field marshal general musa and akhtar malik never told the air force that there is going to be an operation gibraltar so nur khan uh, finds out just by by accident and he goes to field marshal and he says uh, sir this is going to lead to war so he says no no this is a small operation he goes to field marshal then he goes to akhtar malik and then he says that okay you think it's not going to lead to war but let me ask you a question how are you going to support these mujahideen this is this is oh yes yes uh, we will need your support in this they should have told the pakistan air force so uh, lo and behold the first c130 sortie that is flown to support the mujahideen from chaklala uh, i think it was it was um, group captain wing commander or air commodore eg hall who was on the controls of that c130 and uh, the chief the commander in chief comes with his flag and he says i'm going to be in the on, on the flight deck there you can't do that if we get shot down if we have any problem we will have no face to show nur khan insisted on leading from the front second instance when rafiqi late rafiqi and imtiaz bhatti are having combat with four vampires and the vampire they were about 12 of them and then they were mysterious two f6s and they shoot four vampires this very very gutsy commander in chief in an l19 and he's the commander in chief he's flying with a lieutenant or a captain of pakistan army aviation in an l19 down below at let's say 500 to 1000 feet and this combat is taking place around let's say 10000 plus and late rafiqi sahab imtiaz bhatti sahab told me this he gives him a call that number 2 let us look out because we are firing so we don't shoot our own chief so after the everything is over and he's monitoring on the 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 radio so his own t37 and nur khan used to fly from the front so he goes back to rawali picks up his t37 goes to sargoda and uh, 
you know, uh, he embraces Rafiki and Imtiaz Bhatti and they get an SJ each. And uh, so that is the kind of leadership we had. So people will give their life for such leadership. And I think we have done that. One more instance that I will tell you about leadership. Late Rafiki, and this was told at least twice, thrice by Cecil Chaudhary Saab to us. Uh, the sun is setting. Pathan Court has been struck. Devastating uh, effect. This, they, they, they destroyed about 12 aeroplanes. Uh, late Rafiki and uh, Cecil Chaudhary are sitting on a bench. Now that is the time Air Force and Army and Navy used to have benches and cane chairs and no air conditioner. Today we have much more. And uh, you know, surprise has been lost. Uh, you can see the twilight and, and the darkness settle in. And Cecil Chaudhary is a flight lieutenant and, uh, and um, Rafiki Saab is a squad leader. And uh, Cecil Chaudhary says to Rafiki, he said, sir, why don't you talk to the station commander? It's pointless going at this time. Rafiki had spoken with the station commander and probably they had had a word with the CNC also. So Rafiki gets a little uh, annoyed and he says, Cecil Chaudhary, you don't want to come on this mission? There are five, ten more people who are wanting to come on this mission. You know what Cecil says? Cecil Saab says, Sir, even if you are going to hell, I will follow you there. So Rafiki Saab feels very good about it, about his own self and about what Cecil Chaudhary tells. And uh, then they declare the aeroplanes, and so Yunus, Rafiki, and they're walking toward their aeroplanes. And Cecil Saab says, he says, Cecil Saab also has now passed away after a meritorious innings in the education after he retired in St. Mary's, his alma mater. So Rafiki says, Cecil, come here, come here. So Cecil Chaudhary Saab comes and he says, Cecil, I'm sorry. Uh, your wife is never going to forgive me for where I'm taking you. We may not come back. You know what Cecil says? He said, sir, if we don't come back, let her think what she wants to think. Because we will no more be there. We must go and do our bit. And now Rafiki goes there and Rafiki shoots and they, they, they are intercepted three aeroplanes by six hunters right over Halwada. And uh, Rafiki shoots one, he's the leader. Uh, Yunus takes out another one, he's another independent element, Cecil Saab is number two. He's sticking to the tail of, declaring the tail of the leader and uh, Rafiki has his guns jammed. With guns jammed, he should have gotten out of that area because you are a sitting duck and uh, should have told the same thing to Cecil. But because they are attacked by a swarm of hunters, so he says, Cecil, you have the lead. So Cecil takes over the lead and he falls behind as his wingman. Uh, Cecil takes out one uh, hunter and uh, Rafiki Saab is shot one by one. And of course the flight surgeon who went to the wreckage, he says there was this blonde, tall, well-built uh, Pakistani air warrior. So he's probably buried somewhere close to. So these are the kind of tales of leadership which the Pakistani commanders and their number twos and number threes and number fours blazed for all of us to follow. And I'm glad. We are retired. I wear this sky blue jacket today and I wear an F-16 and a JF-17 type in. Uh, humbly proud of what our air warriors have done and I'm glad. Noman Siddiqui, uh, Noman and Hassan Siddiqui did not let us down. Absolutely, and our armed forces shall not let us down in the future as well. Air Marshal Retired Masood Akhtar, thank you so much for being with us here in our studio and sharing your experiences about the 1965 war and Pakistan Air Force's ability to give a bloody nose to all the enemies of Pakistan. Thank you so much.